What is good, y'all? We are here at the Texas Frightmare Weekend. And uh, yeah, I didn't do like an intro or anything because I wanted to get closer to the action. Um, so we've been here about like three hours um, here to be in line for Nev Campbell. That's right. And why do I say we? Well, there's a special guest who might want to make an appearance. Yay, nay. All right, so we got Nico here. Woo! And coworker friend, I'll respect your privacy. <laughs> So yeah, we are here and uh, we're going to have a good time. We're going to see some movies later on since um, we've been in this line. We should treat ourselves to some movies. <laughs> There's excitement coming from Nico over here. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, ended up seeing some cool cosplays while we were waiting in line. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll get a couple more things of footage when we go around the rest of the hall since... We're going to be getting into that after we end up seeing everything. In the hall! In the hall! <laughs> uh, for all the Spongebob fans. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a pretty fun time. Um, I won't be able to be here for the whole um, time, but I'm sure that Miko will be doing uh, something for the entire weekend. I will uh, be here for part of day two as well. Um, but uh, she'll be here for all three. So, yeah. Until next time, we'll see you once we get to the hall. As we travel through the club, we have wares, we have celebrities, we have us. And it is going to be a fantabulous time as we look to see what we shall nab from the goodies here. Woohoo! So we got goodies Got uh, artwork over here. Some cool shirts over here. It's a good time. After going through and seeing, uh, you know, the the showroom, we went off to another room and we got to see Shannon Cook from the Grassy. I mean, he was also in like the Conjuring and and Impulse and. A couple of other things, uh, you know, uh, what was it, uh, was it uh, the, uh, the uh, I can't remember what it is, but Degrassi, that's what really mattered, and he was like, yeah, this is my first convention, and I am actually surprised how many people were knowing me for Degrassi, and I was like, yeah, bro, you're a part of child, people's childhood and stuff, so that was kind of cool, um, but anyway, um, went to and saw a couple movies, two because that's what we're all here for, the horror movie, so that was pretty fun. Um, the last one, eh, it wasn't for me, but I watched the uh, new uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre thing, and it was pretty cool. I was like, wow, this is bloody, <laughs> but that's to be expected, um, and I'm uh, going to be checking out the original later, but uh, yeah, it was a fun time. We shall see what day two has in store. And yeah, till next time, y'all. Sorry, it's not super in depth or anything. But yeah, till next time.
What I remember most is uh, what I would like to talk about is my gift. I enjoyed that the most of anything else I did. And um, it just was a, a, a thing, a moment where um, uh, Toby and I finally communicated, we finally collaborated, and he said, he started out with something really simple, and then I had heard an old saying that no good actor dies quickly. And so, <laughs> being the, the end of my time on the movie, I wanted to extend it as long as possible. <laughs> and, um, so anyway, he said, well, just get a hit on the back of the head and all that. <laughs> no, that's boring, and this is the the real beginning is what happens next. And so I said, no, 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 man. If he hits me like this, I've got to twist my body. And then he said, you spit out blood. And then I said, okay, then I do this. And he said, then you clap your feet off the, the ramp. And so that we work together on it. And I think we made something special. You know, for, to, to start that death march in the movie. So anyway, and then Gunner was all pumped. They hadn't let us see each other. So it was the first time I saw Leatherface. And he was so pumped. I think it was his first thing he did. And I came in and we talked about it. Talked about it. But we came to doing it. And you have to understand, we didn't have, it wasn't a Stanley Cooper movie. We didn't have 50, 60 takes. We were doing this in a couple of takes, which is pretty damn good. But anyway, we uh, got our positions in action, and we went up there, and this was a very small rubber camera. <laughs> that they might not And Gunner came down so hard. <laughs> First, all of the blood vessels in the eye were so long. Oh, wow. And he went across, he was so pumped, right? And I twisted and I spit and I clapped my feet. I did out all that, everything I was crying after him. And he picked me up like a rag dog. <laughs> he just flipped me into this little bitty room, which was not very big at all. And I crashed into the wall and just tried to get as small as I possibly closed the door. schizophrenic nephew. 
who does all that stuff. I said, and I'll do, I'll do him, and I'll do Chuck Martin. And what we got, <laughs> he's a, a fan, he, I, I'll do him. And, and that's so I started doing all this weird stuff. Toby is backing away from me. <laughs> <laughs>
and I inadvertently hit the windshield wiper, <laughs> and it just splashed all this soapy water all over Jim Seedow, and he's trying to deliver his lines, and just coming down, and both Bill and I, we just lost it, and take after take we couldn't do, <laughs> and ended up with Toby getting furious, walking off the set, and fortunately, Kim, in his mild-mannered way, was able to finish it up, and that's one of the iconic scenes. I'll stop there. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out. Uh, I, a couple things I want to say. But my first day there, uh, and I've been on a red eye from Chicago. That's how you pronounce it, by the way. I'm going to <laughs> Uh, yes, it's not Chicago, it's Chicago. <laughs> uh, I got up at six thirty in the morning and came pick me up at the airport. And he goes, "Now uh, they're 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 fixing the shoot. You want to go off to the location, or you want to go home and, and you know just sleep?" And I said, "No, I don't know. I was a twenty-year-old theater actor, and I was making my first you know feature film, so." You know, I'd done a little, uh, like, uh, some training films for an insurance company and shit like that. And, uh, yeah, really. <laughs> and uh, I said, no, 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 I want to go out. I want to see what it's all about, you know. So we go out there, and, uh, and they're starting to work, and the, the crew is setting up a dolly, setting up a bunch of dolly track and doing all this stuff. I was just fascinated with it. And, uh, and Paul Partain. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Paul had this huge 1967 Cadillac convertible, white with red leather interior, you know, and he's got it out there. And it's the kind that had, I don't know if it was a 67, for some reason that sticks in my head, but it had fins on it about that long. That, you know, come up that like if you were riding a bicycle behind it, the guy hit the brakes, you were a dead man. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got this semicircle of lawn chairs set up around, and he's sitting in the you know front and center in his wheelchair, sitting there, waiting to have out the he set up this conversation nook. <laughs> the rest of the cast is all sitting around film equipment shit over there. All the time. Hey, partner! You know, I'm like, hey. And, I, and he says, what are you doing here? And I said, I told him that, you know, I was that playing grandpa. And he was stuck there. He goes, well, time long over here, partner. Sit down. He was a real homey kind of guy. And he had the, the trunk go for his Cadillac. Grab yourself something to drink. He had this huge cooler. Like the size of a construction site, <laughs> it was, you know, it was all filled with big bottles of Coca Cola and uh, 60 ounce cans of Budweiser. <laughs> we had ourselves a drink, and I thought, oh, that was five o'clock somewhere, so it's like seven o'clock in the morning. I grabbed it. <laughs> and uh, these guys can tell you. <laughs> so it's uh, not unlike me. I grab a can of Budweiser and sit, <laughs> sit down with it. Know? And uh, I meet mean, with all of this guy. But at the time, I did not realize that nobody could stand it. <laughs> because he never dropped her. You know, but to watch him act, he was such an inspiration to me. To watch him act, you know, he was uh, just terrific in that role. And, and a shout out to Kim Hankel. Part of the genius of Kim Hankel is he is the only screenwriter in history who have ever made the handicap guy fucking obnoxious and want to go Bill, for you to say that 
you know, we did more, did do more than a couple of takes, was absolute fucking bullshit. <laughs> You're gonna flop out. You know, just flop out. 
I did not really, you know, we've been sweating inside the van with no air conditioning for three or four days. And I didn't have the greatest confidence. We didn't have that super rapport of director to actress yet. You know, there was none of that. And so I thought, I need to make a flop out of this deep freeze. What a dumb idea, <laughs> I'm thinking to myself. So anyway, I, I do the police note. <laughs> and I hear Toby say, OK, Jerry, is it smoky in there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I think we did it three or four or five times, which was one of the fewer times of all. I mean, you know, Toby would have 32 angles at the staircase when Gunner was screaming. You know, that went on from eight in the morning until eight at night. This, I think, was like four or five, and I was just very. <laughs> What is he thinking? <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so I go to see the movie, and you know, I was so worried about my cheeks and the red shorts. And, uh, <laughs> God, Terry, we're going to shoot around it. <laughs> <laughs> Gunner had to then pick up the chainsaw, grab it up, and 
start cutting me up and you know, us. <laughs> that, 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 was, uh, that was pretty terrifying. <laughs> I could feel the oil and the splinters coming off the table because the, the chainsaw was that close to my face. <laughs> And so I got home and I had to talk. And I 
this 30-year-old disco dude. <laughs> but anyway, since I wasn't an actor, but I hadn't heard about a guy by the name of uh, Stanislavski, and he had a method of acting, and I tried to inhabit that, that thing. And so I had them blindfold me as I sat out on the porch prior to my death scene. So I, I really was worked up into a tizzy. And then when they yelled, action, I go into the, go through the, the door, doorway into the kitchen. The, the freezer starts making the sound. I open the freezer. She pops out. I literally went nuts. <laughs> and, and as I turned around, and this is the first time that I see Leatherface. And I go crazy. I start screaming, as you know. And I go tearing out of the house. Like a little girl, I may point out. <laughs> cut and he comes over and he puts his arm around me and said, Alan, that's one of the best screams I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> it was a real wuss scream. <laughs> he said, you gotta wait for him to be in the, in the scene, you know, with the hammer. And so we had, a, we had to shoot that several times so much, I still was freaked out. And a couple of guys like Lou got behind me and had to pull me down, you know, by my belt loops. But that shot in the head, we're talking almost 50 years later, I'm still getting terrible headaches. Fully <laughs> recovered. That's my story. Uh, so, uh, you, you got to see him swinging that chainsaw outside, which, uh, which the rest of us found pretty terrifying. It must have been interesting to see that right first. As I said, once I had read the little paragraph and half of the script referred to Each moment that went by, that size of text got bigger, bigger, bigger. Every fright, every scream, every drop of, you know, fake blood, whatever. Marilyn running, you know, screaming. Gunner was all like, holy, you know. But it was amazing, totally. <laughs> I think uh, I can tell you something that refers to my experience with Gunner that's outside of the sphere of the film. You'll see why Austin was a little town. Anyways, but there is, but they're hard to find. Anyways, um, Gunner is a, a distant member of the family. As well. My brother in law and I bought. An old Peterbilt truck. And we bought it together. That's the truck referred to as the Black Marina. And we bought the truck and started, you know, doing what we did. But before that, his best friend and high school mate was his best man and continued to be a good guy one of his best friends, and that was in our hands. Oh, I didn't know that. So, yeah, we spent a lot of time kind of bumping into each other and all the uh, college kids or whatever students do. And, uh, yeah, Tony, because Gunner was originally from Iceland, and my brother-in-law was from Germany, they were two weirdo kids in high school because they had an attraction each other. And so, you know, we've been camping, we used to go camping with one of them coming down from Iceland or Maine, let's say, but it might as well be And uh, <laughs> just hang out. He's a good guy. And I didn't really know anything about him being on the set. I don't believe I remember Bob told me or I don't know. But uh, it was quite a, quite a shock to see him the way he came out. <laughs>
Ed, which one of you were on the top and which one were on the bottom? Uh, Gunner was on top. Well, you were going backwards, right? So, yeah. <laughs> so Ed, you know, action, and I was supposed to be totally limp, you know, like no bones, and just don't move no matter what happens. Yeah. <laughs> so Ed would get going faster than Gun could keep up with. And my chair would tilt down and I start sliding out of it. <laughs> and nobody would get a cut or anything. So Ed would try to stuff me back in the chair. <laughs> you know, then it start and slide out of the chair. And then they finally cut and uh, and we had to do this like three about the fourth time we had to do it. <laughs> Gun leaned over and whispered in my ear, Toby, if you don't stay in this fucking shit, <laughs> I'm going to kill <laughs> <laughs> And the first time I actually met Gun was in the makeup and, and uh, wardrobe trailer. And uh, I was getting prepped, getting ready to get makeup on it, and uh, Gun was getting dressed. And he put on an a undershirt. And uh, it had a series of holes all across the stomach. I said, hey man, what's the deal with the shirt? He goes, so I put this on to remind me the last time I worked with a chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> and it just reminded myself to be careful. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no. Oh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Wow. <laughs> positioning so just wanted to briefly recap what happened on day two i got there kind of late so i didn't get to do much um i went to the venue um and ended up uh finding uh miko and friend um and we were in kind of like uh the ballroom area waiting till it got closer to time for a photo op with the screencast. So ended up doing that. 
and and uh, since the only two people could be part of the photo, um, Miko and friend took the photo, but enjoyed chatting with them along the way. Um, afterwards, um, we went into uh, the vendor room again and ended up uh, picking up a few things. I ended up getting a couple of shirts. In fact, I should probably grab those real quick and show it to you. So, uh, um, yeah, I ended up getting a couple shirts for my roommates um, because I'm nice like that, but I'll show you the ones that I got for myself. Um, so, so I got this, my Hero Academia shirt, because I was like, cool beans. They got that. I know it has nothing to do with horror. And then also I have this lovely shirt, which also has nothing to do with horror. <laughs> PlayStation! That's right. Um, so that's uh, what I ended up nabbing there while in the vendor hall. And then we ended up meeting um, another gentleman who was the star in... Oh gosh, I can't remember the movie. Uh, but he was also in Repo the Opera. He was pretty nice. Um, but after we uh, met a couple more celebrities, uh, we ended up going to see this uh, film, 13 Tracks to, th uh, to Frighten Agatha Black. And right after that was the the Q and A that we ended up having uh, with the um, uh, cast of uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre from '74, and uh, and that was really neat. So I have a lot of footage of that. So I'll be putting that up after this, um, and then we got to watch the movie. Um, it was my first time seeing it, so that was pretty eventful. Um, and, uh, yeah, way different than the <laughs> remake that they did for 2022. Um, so, yeah. That was, uh, fun to finally see that for the first time, and that room was packed for that one. There are a lot of people there for that. So, got to hear all the reactions and little bits of commentary. That was fun. Um... But yeah, after that, um, I know Miko and uh, a friend went to go um, watch some short films, but I had to call it a night because I was like, I've already had a long day, which is why I was late <laughs> to meeting them there at the con. And plus I was planning on trying to be up in time to see, see them for brunch um, on their day three um, before I had to go off to work. But, you know, um, the, them going the extra mile last night um, made brunch uh, improbable. So, <laughs> yeah. But hopefully they enjoy day three. I'm sure Mika will have a vlog of um, her experience at the con on her own uh, channel. So um, you can look forward to that in the future. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, kind of my experience there. Um, it like truly the, 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 one of the highlights for me was still seeing Shannon cook because of Degrassi, which once again has nothing to do with horror, but it was still really cool to see uh, all the cosplayers, so many people who are really into that, that genre. Um, I'm, you know, not someone who particularly seeks out the that kind of content but you know i like some things here and there and there's definitely a lot of iconic you know characters out there to to recognize even if you haven't watched the movies so it, it's just uh always good to to see people um enjoying and delving into their passions and interests you know so yeah definitely had a good time um, and, um, maybe now that cons are going on again, I can end up, uh, dropping some more content with me going to them. So, 
yeah uh, until next time though Yay.